Hello again, Year 7. And this lesson, we're going to continue with Edward and Llewellyn. And this lesson is going to be the war between Edward and Llewellyn. So as a starter, I want you to climb this castle. And there's four steps to climb this castle. Now, I want you to think back to the last lesson we did on Edward and Llewellyn. And I want you to give two advantages and two disadvantages to ruling a mountainous area. So your first step is advantage one, and then you work your way up to step two for a disadvantage one. And you work your way up to advantage two, and finally to the fourth step of disadvantage two. You can do this on the worksheets that have been provided or in your books or on paper, whichever way is easiest for you. So two advantages and two disadvantages to ruling a mountainous area. Would you like to pause the video and go and do that? You should all be back from doing that task now, so we're going to move on. So the first task. In 1276, a war between Edward and Llewellyn is looking extremely likely. And below are two quotes from each of them. And I'd like you to use these two quotes to make a list of bullet points of reasons why you think war is about to happen between them both. So, for example, Edward here says, Lord Llewellyn refused to pay homage to him, which means respect or loyalty. But Llewellyn's brother already has paid loyalty to Edward, but Llewellyn is refusing. So that could be one reason. So I want you to read through and make these bullet points. If you'd like to pause that now and go and do that task. You should be back from making your bullet points now. So the second task, using your bullet points, I want you to decide which reason you think is the most serious and most likely to cause a war between two. Give reasons and explain why you've chosen this reason. And secondly, do you think Edward and Llewellyn trusted each other? And explain why you think they did or did not. Thirdly, do you think Edward was justified in his decision to go to war with Llewellyn? So justified is, did he have a reason? Was, do you think it was right for him to do so? Fourthly, what do you think Edward wanted to achieve by going to war with Llewellyn? And th fifth, do you think Llewellyn wanted a war with Edward? Or do you think that there wasn't much choice to it and that he had to? If you'd like to pause the video here and complete that task again on the worksheets or in your books or on paper. Should have answered those questions now. So we're going to move on to Edward's attack on Llewellyn. Edward de declared war on Llewellyn and Wales in 1276. However, he didn't take his army and invade Wales until 1277. You remember this map from last lesson showing Edward's land, um, Llewellyn's land that he ruled in Wales? So it, Edward attacked Llewellyn's land from three directions. He attacked from the south, from the northeast, and through the centre. So Llewellyn's lands were 80% mountainous. A lot of the fighting between the two armies took place on mountainous ground. So here we have five statements about Llewellyn's and the Welsh army and King Edward I and England's army. So what I'd like you to do is using the sources that were on that last slide, fill in this table of differences between Welsh fighting styles and English fighting styles. I've modeled an answer here for you. So in the Welsh fighting styles, you put light armor, good for fighting on hills. So if we look back, we can see on here where it says, in the top right, in Wales, the foot soldier has an advantage over the horseman. Their light armour means they can get up hills quicker. And remember, they're fighting on mountainous regions. 
So if you'd like to pause the video now and go and complete that task, again on the worksheet, in your books or on paper, Should be back now from completing that table. We're going to discuss what happened. So Llewellyn had heard about Edward's planned attack and went to his castle in the mountains of Snowdon, up in the up towards the north here. We're, oh. Llewellyn thought that Edward and his army would be tired after such a long journey from London and climbing the hills and the mountainous regions to get to him. But Llewellyn's plan failed. Edward's army wasn't tied at all. And Edward sieged Llewellyn's castle. Sieged means they lock it and stop anyone coming in or going out of the castle. There was no deliveries. So, they, so farmers couldn't bring food to the castle. So slowly their food supplies and any supplies they had there, weaponries, arrows, were all getting short and they were losing them all. So this meant that Llewellyn, in order to save everybody, had to surrender to Edward. After surrendering, Edward took some of Llewellyn's lands, keeping most of himself by creating more marcher lordships. And he gave some to Llewellyn's brother, David. Remember, David has pledged his allegiance to Edward, not to Llewellyn. Edward also told Llewellyn that he could no longer call himself the Prince of Wales but he could call himself the Prince of Gwynis. So you can see here you know, on this map, how much Llewellyn's lands have shrunk, how much Edward's have grown, and the lands are given to David. So in the second part of this war between Llewellyn and Edward, Llewellyn's brother David was unhappy with the land that he'd been given by the English. He felt he deserved bigger land. So he began attacking the marcher lordships just outside his area. And the ruler of the the rulers of these marcher lord, the new marcher lordships that had been taken by Edward from the control of Llewellyn became unhappy and they started a rebellion with Llewellyn. Edward didn't, didn't agree with this rebellion, and his army again attacked. Wales from four different points, through the north, through Anglesey, the northeast, central Wales, and again through south Wales. So they attacked on four points. Llewellyn then fought back against the English, push, pushing them back into the centre of Wales, where a big, arrow, uh, big battle takes place in the centre of Wales, in Orerwin Bridge near Bilth Wells in December of 1282. But Llewellyn is killed during this battle. Edward then captures David after fighting against the Lord Mar Lord Marcher Lordships. And then he then can take Edward then takes control of the whole of Wales. So as our final task for this lesson, here is Llewellyn's coat of arms. So his shield and his sign. And here is Edward's the first coat of arms. So what I want to know is what would your coat of arms look like? What animals, what shapes, what would your coat of arms look like? So you can do this on the worksheet or in your books or on paper. I'd like you to draw your coat of arms for me. And then that's the final task of this lesson and I shall see you next time. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time year seven.